Granny squares are still incredibly popular in 2024, and they're actually one of my favorite projects to crochet this time of year because they're super portable and super light and really small and compact. And you can take them with you on trips or vacations, and you don't have to have a ton of yarn laying in your lap if it's kind of warm outside. They're just the all around good this time of year kind of project. This isn't actually a square, it's a hexagon shape, but you do see it referred to as a hexagon granny square because it's a hexagon shape and it uses a traditional granny stitch with some modifications. We'll talk about that too. So this is the little granny hexagon that we're gonna be working on today. Typically, the granny stitch is worked with clusters of three double crochets. When you do that for a hexagon granny square though, you get something that looks like this. Not only is it wanting to wave, but it also is taking on almost a star shape. Instead of these edges being flat, they're, you know, totally curved. So we're not gonna do this. You will have to break some muscle memory. So then you might find some options out there that alternate around with three double crochets, with a round that has two double crochets. And this is a version of that. So here they are side by side. You can decide which one looks best to you. I'm gonna show you how to crochet this one. Grab your first color and make your slip knot. And you'll start with three chains and join with the slip stitch to the first chain to form a ring, or as I like to call it, your little blob of yarn. <laughs> and then we'll start with a chain. And we're doing so to create a stitch, but also create one of the chain two spaces. Now it's technically correct for me to say you should crochet five chains, because typically three chains is the same height as a double crochet, and then we have a chain two space. But because I crochet a lot tighter and shorter than normal, when I make five, it's way too big. So I'm gonna show you four, but just know that the pattern is gonna say five because that's technically correct. If you crochet tight and you know that, you might find better luck with crocheting four chains. Anywho, from here, you'll make two double crochets in the center of the ring. and then two chains, and that's your repeat. Two double crochets, chain two. And each of these two is creating a side in your hexagon. So we need six sides total. We've actually started the first one and I didn't even tell you that. So for now, we'll do this five times. So we have five groups of two. And this is what we're left with. So the chain, remember we said does count as a stitch? Well, that is one of our two. So we just need another double crochet in the center of the ring. And we can join with the slip stitch in the chain space there. So there's a couple things you can do at this point. If you want to change colors, I'll show you that in just a minute. If you wanna stay with the same color, I wanna quickly just show you how you would do that. To start the second round, if you don't wanna change colors, you'll start with your same chain. Remember, normally chain five, but I'm making four. And then make two double crochets in the same chain two space. Okay, so that's how you would not change colors, but let's say you do. There's a technique that I like to use because it eliminates just tons and tons of ends to weave in, which is saving time, that's a huge deal to me. Um, but it's, it's polarizing. You either love the magic knot or you hate it. So for this technique, you'll pull up just a teeny bit, 
trim it. And you can pull out your slip stitch and your last double crochet. By the way, this color is called Misty Green, I think. Yeah, Misty Green, and this one is Pink Quartz. And then we're also using Fog Blue. Really pretty color combination. I love this yarn. Tie the new yarn around the tail of the old yarn. And slide that knot down enough that you can tie a knot with this end as well. You'll tie that around the new color. I do have a much slower video on how to do the magic knot. I'll link to that as well if you really want to give this a try. I think it's a worthwhile technique to learn. So you pull those together, pull them super tight, and you can just trim those completely off. And that's all there is to it. <laughs> you just, you've just joined your two colors and you have saved yourself from weaving in two ends. That's why I love this technique. So you'll make your double crochet again, the one that we had to take out. Kind of work it under there and then redo your slip stitch. And we're ready to start the second round. So this one starts the same way as if you weren't changing colors, right? You're gonna start with your chain, your chain five or your chain four if you're like me and work two double crochets in the chain two space. And we'll come back to this corner. The corner repeat though will be worked in all of our little corner spaces from here on out. You'll make two double crochets in the chain two space. chain two, and two more double crochets. Now while I'm working on this repeat, one thing I wanted to mention is that the written instructions for how I like to do these granny squares, I have that written up on my website. You can access it completely free, and I've got that link in the description below. It's a really great, great way to learn how to read patterns if you're still kind of new to this. Okay, when you've made it to this point, the last thing that you'll wanna do is make a double crochet in this chain space and that will finish this corner, right? Remember the corner pattern? It's two double crochets, a chain two and two double crochets. And you need to have that in every single one of your points or your corners or whatever you wanna call them in order for this to continue staying hexagon shape and flat. So we've worked our double crochet there. We can slip stitch into this chain space. So this is what it'll look like at this point. And this start and finishing how I sort of break up this point or this corner of the pattern, that may or may not be what you find across the internet or in other tutorials. It's just how I like to start and stop my grainy squares and hexagons and that sort of thing because I think it looks a little bit neater and if you didn't change colors you would still just make a double crochet and slip stitch in your chain space. So the next round and actually pretty much all of the subsequent rounds after this follow the same general pattern. I mentioned your corner patterns or your point patterns <laughs> for the hexagon are the same. Two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. So we'll keep doing that on this third round, but the different part is that we have now a space in between them and we need to work some stitches there. Fortunately, the pattern is not very different actually. So you'll start with your starting chain and make two double crochets in the same chain two space. So this is the same no matter which round you're working on, you'll always start and end the round exactly the same way. So where the rounds differ is in the in-between sections of the little points. You'll still work two double crochets. 
but the part that'll be different from round to round is the number of times you do that between your corners will increase over time. Two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. And we've actually reached the repeat for this. So if you're sort of brand new to crochet and you haven't tried a traditional granny square yet, I'm gonna link to my video for that as well. This is one of those classic crochet icons that like you can't just not have made a granny square before. You know, it's, it's just one of those things that it's like a rite of passage. You've got to make at least one granny square project in your career of crocheting. It's, they're just so much fun. So in my next square, I used the Aran color. I think that's what it's called. And that is basically the same color as my background. So I'm not going to put you through that. I'm going to, let's just continue using this blue yarn and we'll see how that looks. It's really cool with motifs and granny squares and projects like that. It just completely changes the look of a project based on how you do the color changes and the joints too. You can really change things up that way. It's just, I don't know. It's such a fun way of being creative, but not do the same thing over and over. Like you can do the same thing, but it can all look completely different. I don't know. So the fourth round here starts the same. You start with your starting chain and two double crochets. All you do is work your clusters in between the clusters from the previous round and just know that that number will increase by one every single round, at least on, on the same side. So we had one cluster on this round. We're going to have two clusters to this side on this round. Does that make sense? Are you following me? And our point pattern or corner pattern will be the same. Two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. You know, I have been wanting to use, you know, the canvas bags that you can buy for super cheap. Like you can walk into Hobby Lobby or wherever and get a pack of, I don't know, like five or six of them for just a couple of bucks. They're really good for throwing projects into, or I don't know, like, you know what I'm talking about, the canvas bags. They, they're kind of plain, right? As they are. And so a lot of times people will paint on them or use like iron on transfers or whatever. I think it would be so cute to kind of wrap them in some kind of granny square or hexagon. If you would be interested in seeing that, let me know. I have a stack of granny squares and I have some of those canvas bags and I would love to see what it looks like. If it's a project that you think you would want to do with me, let me know and I will make that video. I think it's something I could do super quick and it would be a great spring project. In the instance where you didn't change colors previously, this is how you would finish the round. Same as before, but looks a little different with the same color. So make your double crochet, make your slip stitch, and you're good to go. So I'm pretty happy with this size here. I'm gonna go ahead and fasten off, show you some little tricks and details about how you would do that. This is a pretty good size. It's about five inches. You could easily turn this into a project. If you're gonna make a blanket, you might wanna make them bigger so you don't have to make as many of them. But for many projects, four rounds, five rounds, that'll really be a pretty good place to fasten off. I do wanna show you a little trick for how I like to fasten off granny squares so that you don't have this blob. So if you fasten off like this, like you would normally do, you have this blob there and it, it messes up your joins and I don't know, it, it's not bad, but there is a better way. I wanna show you the better way. You pull up all the way, pull that all the way through. 
and find your chain right here and run the needle under it and pull that all the way through. And then the loop that's right here, you'll run your needle down through it. And see how that made what looks like another chain? It's so much neater that way, right? And then I would just weave in this end along the bottom. So this is the benefit to the magic knot. I only have two ends, whereas I would have had one, two, three, four, five, six. The magic knot isn't for everybody. You do have little knots in your project as a result of it, and that's a compromise. But for me personally, I haven't had anything bad happen as a result. I haven't had any of these knots come out, so I feel perfectly comfortable with it, you know, until it fails me. I'm, I have heard that some people have had issues with it in the past, so that's something to consider, but I haven't personally had any issues, so I feel pretty good about it. So the other thing you'll notice is right off the hook, it's not perfect, but it's okay. You could go on to whatever kind of join that you want to do for your project, and it would look pretty darn good. But if you want to take your squares and your motifs to the next level, you could always try blocking them. So this is just a normal gridded blocking mat. This one is specifically like for knitting and crochet. And I really, really like these. What I would do is either one, dunk this in water, the, the motif here, and get it wet and pin it out and use the grid to help me make it, you know, kind of uniform. So yeah, that's how you would block your hexagon grannies if you decide to do that for your project. Again, you don't have to, it's really personal preference, but it is worth the time and effort, I think, if you want a little bit more of a polished and professional look. Once you have several of these or enough for your project, then the joining part would come next. I do have a video on my five favorite joins for granny squares. I'll have that linked in the description as well as the written instructions for this hexagon granny. So you don't have to have it memorized. You can have it there in front of you. And that's pretty much it. Check out that video next. Check out behooked.com for our crochet is cool tees and a classic behooked tee. I appreciate all the support there. Happy hooking and I'll see you in the next one.